Um, so I just want to welcome everybody to the, the first series um, of, of six kind of webinars for local businesses that are they're on or close to the International Appalachian Trail, the Ulster Ireland route. So my name is um, Beverly McGowan and I'm Outdoor Recreation NI's Marketing Manager and Outdoor Recreation NI is the organisation who are going to be managing the promotion of the trail through a marketing project um, that the, the lags and the council areas were successful um, with funding for. So that's a, a north-south cooperation um, project through the Rural Development Programme. Um, so some of you might already know that the, the actual route itself was, was launched in August 2013, I think, Inga, is that right? Um, and I suppose it's it's a continuation of one of the, the world's largest walking trail networks, um, which started off as, as the, the Appalachian Trail in, in America. So the Appalachian Mountains were, just to give you a wee bit of background, um, here's this, the sciencey bit, um, the Appalachian Mountains were formed um, more than I think it was 250 million years ago when the when the earth plates collided to form the the supercontinent um and then whenever today's um continents separated to form the the atlantic ocean remnants of those mountains were were found um or ended up in 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 places in in america and all over the world um so then in in 1994 um there was a conservationist called uh, dick anderson um, he had actually thought of an idea to continue the Appalachian Trail to all those other geographic regions um, that, that were connected, I suppose, once by the, that, that mountain range. And um, that's, I suppose, where the International Appalachian Trail then, then was born. And it now has 23 sections uh, or, or chapters, as, as they're called, um, all over the world and, and now including, including Ireland. So, I, I'm going to give an overview of, of where the actual trail goes, um, but it just it's, it is located in, in the province of, of Ulster in Ireland and it crosses four counties and six council areas, but I'll just go into more detail of actually what, where it goes and so, so will Inga um, as well. So recently the trail has been given quite a lot of um, significant invested um, through, through that um, RDP project. And that supposes for two elements. So the first element um, was for a range of trail improvement works along the trail, um, which Inga is going to talk about later. And then there's also a marketing project, which Outdoor Recreation and I are delivering. And that will be to enhance its awareness to um, not only local visitors, but also national and international visitors. So I suppose as part of the, the marketing project, um, we're actually, um, you know, we're, we're developing a new website, we're putting together a trail guide, um, we're taking, you know, a suite of photography, professional photography along the route and videography, all to prepare for a range of marketing campaigns that will be delivering in, in Ireland and America. And that's why um, we're getting in touch with with local businesses. We're at, we're at at a stage now where we want to engage with the local businesses on the route to um, get you involved in those marketing campaigns and just to go over you know what actually that visitor needs and what services they they require. So um, this evening uh, we'll probably go on, hopefully stay on track and go on to about half eight. Um, and first of all. We have, um, just, just to give you a run through of, of what we're going to chat through tonight, we have Inga Bach, who probably most of you already know from Donegal Local Development Company, and she's going to be talking over the, the actual where the route goes in Donegal and the trail improvements that she's been working on. Then I'm going to give a presentation on who we anticipate the, the visitors to be that are actually going to come and visit the trail and what services they require and how you guys can actually service those, those visitors. Then we're going to have Eve Nicholson um, from the Wales Coast Path marketing team, and she's going to talk about how local businesses in uh, close to the to the Wales Coast Path have adapted to to the to the path and to its visitors. And then we'll just um, follow. Lastly, follow up with a question and answer session, and then just um, what kind of next steps and and do do a quick roundup. Um, so I'm going to stop babbling on and I'm just going to hand over to Inga. Um, so Inga, over to you. 
Thanks very much, Beverly. If I can get my screen share up here now. There we go. And of course, I went too far. Now, I hope you can see that. So thanks, Beverly, and hello, everyone. My name is Inga Buck. I'm the Rural Recreation Officer for Donegal Local Development Company, or DLDC, and I've been working on the development of the IAT since 2010. DLDC is the driving the development of the route in Donegal and we're partnering with Donegal County Council, UDRAS, as well as communities, businesses and individuals along the route. This is the overview map of the route in Donegal and I'll tell you about the progress in Donegal so far and then walk you through the 123 kilometres of trail in about five minutes. In Donegal, the trail uses existing routes at Sleeve League, at the Tower Loop in Glen Kill the Schlee Column Kill, the Blue Stack Way and the Legany Loop. And uh, we're connecting them mainly over back roads. There we go. Um, the story of the IAT in Donegal so far. The trail has been on the ground and walkable since 2013. The trailhead information boards are in the making as we speak and they will be placed in Malinbeg in Adra and Donegal Town with further smaller information signs along the route. This is the impression of Ardra, where it will be. There will be trail sculptures at the Inlet Shul, the Walker's Hostel in Cashel, at the Oanea River in Ardra, and this that, that one is installed already, and one just before the Tyrone border. And there will be milestones installed throughout the length of the IAT in Ulster Ireland, and six of them will be in Donegal. They're small granite markers with GPS locations and they'll be IAT specific uh, photo opportunities along the whole trail. So now I'll take you on a whistle stop tour of the route on the ground. There will be information signage at Sleep League, but walkers who are not extremely skilled and self-sufficient have two options. They either hire a guide to do Sleep League to Malenbeg or they walk part or all of the clifftop path from Bunglass to Sleeve League, returning via the Pilgrim Path or vice versa, and then make their way over to Malenbeg to start the self-guided route. The trailhead and with that the marked route starts at the Silver Strand Car Park in Malenbeg and follows the road up to Malenmore Crossroads where the trail turns right. At the old school, I don't know whether you can follow that, I'm literally going along the route uh, um, if you can see my pointer as I talk through it. So at the old school, um, the trail turns up left and follows the old green road to Glen Cullum Kill. It joins the Schlee Cullum Kill to reach Cashel, where it then picks up the tower loop up Glen Head and then um, rejoins the Schlee Cullum Kill uh, as far as Adra. It goes past the mast and down to Unpart, um, where it heads inland along the road and at Largy Brack, it goes off-road and goes around the back of Krakuna to merge back on the road and uh, at the quarry and heads down to Mahara. Still on the road, it heads from Mahara um, past Asaranka Waterfall and meeting the main road, it leaves the Schlee Kill and heads into Adra town. Here it picks up the Blue Stack Way going out the Port New Road. I can't see my... Here we go, out the Port New Road and soon turns right and down to the Owenia River uh, that is crossed to the northern shore at Clorn Conwell. It follows the river, crossing it twice to reach Tulliard. From Tulliard, it leads through the town of Glenties, leaving via the Glen Road and crossing the Oanea once more to head south uh, through Minahala and Minawanya and Dibbon. And then it crosses the Blue Stacks uh, at the saddle at Clochmeen Hill and descends into Sallows. It goes round Jeejar Graveyard and through the Land Commission Bog and Owen Boy to leave, at, leave you at the mouth of the Eglish Valley. It then rises through the Eglish Valley and around Banner Hill to descend down to Loresk, passing Harvey's Point and the um, Loresk Castle Estate and over uh, the River Esk at Trushbank uh, and where it leaves then the Blue Stack Way to cross the main road at Clare Chapel 
and winds its way over the back roads to Achlem Bridge. Here it turns left up to Legany and at the hall it joins the Legany Loop up into the Minadreen wind farm and in there it leaves the, the loop to head east to meet the border to Tyrone at Kelly's Bridge. And here we leave the walker in the good hands of Derry City and Straban County Council on their way to Larn. So that's all the route that I have to show you. And <laughs> I know it was very quick, but just to give you an idea of where it goes. If you have any questions after tonight, please contact either myself or Simon Canning, who's here as well. Big wave, thank you. Um, he's working on the project with me and our contact details are on the screen there which just leaves me to say thanks very much for coming with me and to hand you back over to Beverly. You're on mute. <laughs> Beverly, you're on mute there. We can't hear you. Thanks, Inga. It's great to get that insider knowledge of, of, of where the route actually goes. Um, I can't wait to get up and do it myself someday, um, especially the, the part around the, the waterfall. Um, so I'm, I'm going to uh, give just a, a quick presentation on um, who we anticipate who, the, who is going to visit the trail, just based on previous research that we've done. Um, and just what, what kind of visitor services they need, and then just um, a few kind of ideas and, and on how you can really tailor your offering to, to those visitors. Good evening, everybody. My name is Beverly McGowan. I'm Outdoor Recreation and I's Marketing Manager, and I'm also leading the marketing project for the International Appalachian Trail Ulster Ireland. And this evening, my presentation is going to go over how local businesses can benefit from and service visitors to the trail. So just to give you an overview of the route itself, it's 280 miles in length, which equates to around 450 kilometres. And there in the black on the left hand side, you'll see that it starts at West Donegal at Sleeve League. It passes through the Bluestack Mountains before then it picks up the Ulster Way in Northern Ireland. It goes through the Sparrow Mountains, then up towards the Causeway Coast before making its way down through the Glens of Antrim and then finishing in, in Larne. So who is actually going to visit the trail? So based on previous research that we've done with other long distance trails, so the likes of the Southwest Coast Path and the Wales Coast Path, which you'll hear more about later on, we anticipate the majority of visitors will be short distance walkers. So 70 to 80 percent will be short distance walkers. So those that have maybe seen the trail on Facebook or the local newspaper and they want to experience it, but they certainly don't want to experience um, a, a long section of it. They just want to maybe walk, to, you know, two to five miles. And we will hear from uh, Eve Nicholson from the Wales Coast Path that the actual average stretch walked along it is actually just three miles long um, and another group falling into this category would be previous long distance um, and through walkers that have walked to the IAT but they want to come back now and walk a short distance because they're maybe getting a wee bit older. Then a third of, of visitors we expect to be actual walkers so medium to long distance walkers so they'll be walkers that will walk maybe 10 to 15 miles per day over multiple days, over weekends, over weeks, or they will complete, complete the route in its entirety. And those walkers will require walking specific services, which I'll go on to talk about. So this just breaks down the visitor even, even further, just gives you a wee bit more detail on, on, on their motivations and who they are. So first of all, the short distance walker, you know, the IIT is only one part of their trip. They will be doing other things while they're here and they really only want to experience a short section of it. They don't, they don't want to be on it all day long. They're still keen to hear about it and learn about the history of the trail. So they, they're keen to go on, on, on a guided walk. Then we have the actual walker, which is broken down into three groups. We've got the medium distance, the long distance and the through walker. So the medium distance walker, they'll enjoy walking as, as part of, or it might be the main reason for their trip and they'll complete one or more days walking. And they may book some, some walking services. 
Then we have the long distance walker who's an enthusiastic walker and definitely they, ha they will come and visit because it's the main reason um, for their trip. And they'll participate in, in one week of walking or completing large sections of, of longer distance trails. And they're very interested in bagging trails. So if you like putting them on their, on their bucket list. Then we have the through walker. The through walker will walk the IAT in, in one go it's in, in, in its entirety. They're, they're an avid walker and you, know, you could say that they're someone seeking solitude. And they've completed other significant long distance trails um, before. And they are very self-sufficient, so they'll carry all their own food and pitch their own tent. So the requirement for walking services is less with, with the through walker. And through this marketing project, we'll be carrying out two marketing campaigns, um, one in Ireland and one in America because of those links with the Appalachian Trail. You know, there's lots of people in America who've done the Appalachian Trail that would be interested in completing um, this, this trail. So what services do they require? We'll start off with the short distance walker because that's going to be the majority um, of visitors. So again, you know, the, as I mentioned before, they're, they're keen to hear and learn about the trail so that they are interested in going on a guided walk, a short guided walk, and they're keen to have you know, refreshments and toilet stop maybe before or after their guided walk and tea and coffee and scones. And then because one of the marketing campaigns we will be carrying out is in America, some Americans will have power crawlers and some won't. So there may be a requirement for a shuttle service to and from their hotel to the, the start point of, of the different walks. The medium to long distance walker will require accommodation, food and drink, shuttle services to and from their hotel. They might require luggage transfers from, from the, to, to their next accommodation and some more so than the medium distance walker may require walk guides uh, and learn about the, the trail as, as they go from the walk guide. So how can local businesses service these walkers? Uh, you know, I know I understand that some businesses will be reluctant to offer services at the start until the trail is well established and attracting a significant amount of visitors. But again, you know, it is like that chicken and egg scenario that until there's there's walker services available um, and packages available, that's what's going to attract more walkers to the trail. So based on, on who we anticipate that's going to visit the trail, um, we would recommend that you know, local businesses focus on you know, providing for that short distance walker because at the end of the day, that's going to be 70 to 80 percent of visitors. You know whether it's offering you know guided walks and um, providing storytelling um partnering up with a local cafe to offer you know tea coffee and scones before or after the walk um, and if you can provide shuttle services for those that may need to and from their accommodation and even though the number of medium to long distance walkers initially will be lower until the trail is well established it is still worth providing for that visitor, you know, because that's still going to be a third of the visitors. So whether that's um, offering packages that include accommodation or pack lunches that walkers can take out with them during the day and when they're walking and evening meals when they get back, um, whether there's walk guides for the longer distance sections of the trail um, and offering shuttle services and, and luggage trans transfers as well. And, you know, don't forget, if you can't provide all of the visitor services in, in one package, then there's lots of people and lots of businesses um, on this call that you can partner up with um, and work collaboratively to you know, provide for that visitor. So whether that's just a walk guide partnering up with a local cafe to offer you know, tea, coffee and, uh, and scones after their guided walk, um, it's all about working in, in partnership. So to help you stand out and be really proactive and attracting walkers to your business, there's some things that you can do just to tailor your current offering. So whether that's offering storage, washing and drying facilities for walkers equipment, providing information on, on local IAT walks, so giving them access to the, the new IAT website, which will be IATUlsterIreland.com, and that will contain information on, on the route and um, all the, the walking services. You can stock the new trail guide that we're producing, provide information on local walk guides, 
offer shuttle services and, and luggage transfers if they're required, um, offering a hot drink after a long day's walking, which I know would be really welcomed, providing access to kitchen facilities early in the morning to, you know, for walkers to prepare food or offer early breakfasts before they before they head out, providing walkers discounts. Um, something that's really useful and I really recommend all the businesses to do along the route is to recce the route and just really get to know it and put yourself in, in walker's shoes just to understand what they, they might require. And then lastly is thinking maybe about becoming pet friendly just because more and more walkers are going out walking with, with their dogs. And here's just some examples, just to give you a wee bit of inspiration um, of how these businesses are, are standing out and attracting, attracting walkers. So, you know, discounts for walkers or there's drying facilities. Um, the two pictures on the right hand side are pictures from accommodation providers in America along the Appalachian Trail. So you've got some quirky walking boots just along, along the fence and then you've got an Appalachian Trail sign within the accommodation. Uh, on the left hand bottom left, we've just got a sign um, outside a local pub um, for attracting, you know, welcoming walkers and welcoming their, their pets. And then in the middle there is a coffee cart that it's actually set up along the lagging towpath and they've got picnic tables all around it. So for walkers that are walking the lagging towpath, um, they can stop and have coffee and pastries and sit down and enjoy them. So from October time, Outdoor Recreation and I will be running three marketing campaigns that you can get involved in. So we'll be running one in Northern Ireland and Donegal and we'll be using the, we'll be doing launch events and we'll be using those to kickstart those campaigns. We'll be running a campaign in Ireland and then we'll be running a campaign in North America just because of the links with the Appalachian Trail. So in North America, we'll be targeting those people that have walked the, the Appalachian Trail to come and come and do the International Appalachian Trail here. And then we will also, for the short distance walker, we will be using the likes of tour operators that have itineraries already in Northern Ireland and Donegal. And we'll also be using Tourism Ireland to promote direct to the, the American consumer. Because we have such a limited budget in, in North America for that short distance walker, we want to focus on IIT walks that are close to areas that are famous and well known by the American visitor and some places that they're, they're, they're already maybe going to visit anyway. So the likes of Loch Esk, Giants Causeway, the Ulster American Folk Park. So there's there's two ways that, that you can get your business promoted. First of all, you can get a listing on the website itself. And then what you can also do is submit an IAT experience for the website and we will use those experiences to promote in, in marketing campaigns. Now there's nothing that you need to do really at the minute. Um, our recreation staff will be in touch with you to help you and support you in creating and developing IAT experiences or just simply tailoring your, your own offering. Um, and we will also send you, we can send um, content on the International Appalachian Trail of Star Island. We can send photos, we can send videos, we can send press releases so that you can promote the trail on your website and social media platforms too. Sorry, I'm just going to kick in here now as, as a real person um, talking. So uh, <clears throat> we've done a, an audit of, of the visitor services um, along the, the whole route. Um, and this evening, obviously, I'm, I'm just going to talk about the ones in, in Donegal. So that was um, accommodation, food and drink and, and walking providers, um, you know, who would offer um, different walking services. So Kerry, if you can flick on to the next slide, please. So this is um, a map of, of the first, um, the, I suppose, the, the more western um, section of, of the IIT in Donegal. So this is just an overview of what accommodation, food and drink and walking providers um, are available um, close to on or close to, to the route. And I'll just note there that um, some of the walking providers are not listed. Not We don't have all of them listed because some are based in different areas, but they still operate um, along the IAT. So um, I have I have a list here that I can go through just to make sure that we, we've included everybody. Kerry, if you can go to the next slide then. 
So then this is just the, the, the next section of the IAT in, in Donegal. And again, that's a mapped out accommodation, food and drink and, and walk-in providers. So <clears throat> from those two maps then, um, and, and I had discussions with, with Inga earlier on in the week, we would feel that there's the gaps in service provision really would be between um, Glen, Colin, Keel and Ordra. So ex ex please excuse my pronunciation of some of these areas. I, I'm sitting in County, county Down, so um, I'm, I might say some of them very well, but um, that, that's where we feel would be the biggest gap between, between those two places. Because that stretch of route is over 25K, it would be too long to walk in, in one day and there isn't enough accommodation and food and drink along, along it. There is some, in, I suppose, informal services, if you like. Um, you know, there's there's B and Bs that would shuttle walkers to and from Park Pier. There's coffee vans um, along the route. There's Airbnbs as well. But again, the, the problem with Airbnbs a lot of the time is that you have to rent the whole house, which wouldn't really be ideal for walkers. Um, there's a glamping site at at Crow Pods, and then there's there's Port. Hurt, maybe Donegal Cottage, if it's pronounced, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. So the ideal place um, where we feel that would really welcome um, additional services is in Macquarie, um, because it will naturally attract visitors um, because of the, the waterfall and the caves. And again, there is Airbnbs in the area, but because you have would have to rent the whole house, they're, they're not really ideal for walkers. And then the other stretch where we feel hey, there's some visitor services needed is between Glenties and Loch Esk. And that's mainly um, food and drink because that stretch can really be walked in a day. There's less requirement for accommodation. Um, but there's very little places along that way where you can maybe stop and get a cup of tea or, or go in somewhere for your lunch. So that would be another kind of gap in, in visitor services that um, we, we feel would be, would be greatly welcomed by the, you know, the visitor to the, to the IIT. Um, I suppose some general kind of observations is, you know, the town's Bunglass has a, has a good range of accommodation uh, and food and drink because of its popularity with, with Sleeve League. Um, and then, you know, Glen Column, Keel or Dra and Glenties, those three towns have, have good, good provision already in place. And Loch Esk as well also has good provision in place. Um, Welcome, welcome providers. There is there is a good range of welcome providers. I know you can't really see probably my slide on the on the right hand side, but there is a good um, provision of, of welcome providers you've got. Now, if there's any here that I haven't included, please just shout. Paddy Clark, Anne Leonard, Bren Whelan, Pat Murphy, Ian Miller, Sh Seamus Dunahan, John McGrory and she and she Sean Mullen, sorry, um, but if there, if there's any there that that um, anybody else, please feel free to to shout if I haven't included you. Um, but we feel that you know there's there is a good provision of of, of walking guides um in the area. Um, Donegal Town is also nearby. Uh, it's not it's not actually on the route, but it's nearby and it can be accessed by by the Blue Stacks Way, and it also has has good accommodate or you know good provision accommodation and places to eat and drink. Um, if 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 people are going to be staying there, you know they can um, potentially, you know, maybe if there were shuttle services to and from Donegal to to the um, IIT route, and then Carrie, if you just flick on, so this is just I suppose an, an overview of where where we see the gaps, and then where does this lead, or what opportunities does this open for for businesses. Um, so for the short distance walkers, guided walks with short guided walks with with refreshments in, in those kind of popular areas. So like the likes of Loch Esk or the or the waterfall, um, because that's naturally going to attract um visitors to those kind of sh where that visitor wants to go, where that short visitor wants to go, they want to go and they want to see something. Um, so those two areas would would naturally attract visitors, and then we have um. Shuttle services, if they're required, again, for that, I suppose that Amer American visitor that maybe hasn't hired a car um, and they do require shuttles to and from their hotel. The medium and long distance walkers. So this 
this section of the trail is, is a good starting point. So there's maybe opportunities to offer transfers to and from airports and, and ferries. And then you've got the, the walker packages. So whether that's accommodation, food and drink and pack lunches and shuttle services and luggage transfers. Um, accommodation and food and drink between those two gaps. So I've, I've already went over that on food and drink opportunities between Glendies and Loch Esk. And then again, it's really, you know, um, services don't have to, you know, can be very informal. You know, we're not asking new businesses to set up. You know, maybe it's just the case of a local B&B starts offering shuttle services to begin with, you know, but that's that's a huge um, opportunity for for that business and, and it's a it's would be greatly welcomed and means then that that IIT worker can get avail of that service so whether it's just tailoring your current offering to maybe offer you know drying facilities and shuttle services and um, doesn't have to be anything you know um, very big it just means kind of tailoring your offering to, to attract that that walker and to service that walker and then lastly it's just really to you know, promote the trail on your marketing platform. So whether that's, you know, putting up information on your, your social media pages or, or on your website. And as we kind of deliver the, the different marketing campaigns, we'll be creating a lot of content that you can use. So, you know, we can send you like wording for social posts, we can send you videos, photos, um, and then the new website is gonna be up where the route details will all be on that. So, you know, there, there's a lot of um, information there that you can use and you can also then, once we have the trail guide produced, you can stock it too, if you want to. Um, <clears throat> and Kerry, if you could just go on to the next slide. So this is just really for you to have a contact email address. So again, I know I said in my presentation, but um, one of my colleagues is going to be in touch with you all to try and get some IIT experiences for our webs for the new website and for our marketing campaigns. Um, and Ethan will be able to, you know, you can chat over with him if, if there's anything that you were thinking about or if you have any questions, you know, he's he, he'll be there to guide and support as well. So that's just his email address if you want to get in touch with him in the meantime. But again, he, he will be in touch within probably the next few weeks. So there's nothing really that you have to do right at this moment. So that's, that's everything from me. I'm just going to um, hand you straight over to um, Eve Nicholson, and she is from the Wales Coast Path marketing team. Uh, marketing team. Um, and, and she's just gonna go over how local businesses in close to the route have adapted um, for, for the trail and for the visitors that, that visit that trail. Hello, I'm Eve Nicholson and I work for the Wales Coast Path team here in Wales. We've been asked by the Outdoor Recreation Northern Ireland to talk about how we engage with businesses along the way. Firstly, let's introduce ourselves. The Wales Coast Path is 870 miles long and it is a footpath that follows the entire Welsh coastline. It was officially launched open for business in May 2012 as one of the few coastal footpaths in the world around the country. We do a variety of business to business and business to consumer marketing activities and we work very closely with Visit Wales with the, which is the tourism arm of Welsh Government and Welsh Government who are the funders of the path. We have a dedicated team of PATH officers covering all of those marketing sectors that you see on the image, as well as a, mar a small marketing team. If you have time, there is a video there, which is basically an overview of what the PATH means to different people through drone footage and interviews. The PATH also incorporates some well used and existing walking routes that were um, already marketed as coastal walking routes, such as the Isle of Anglesey in North Wales, Ceredigion in, in Midwest, 
and it also includes the Pembrokeshire Coast Path in the west, which is already part of the Appalachian Trail. So who are our target audiences? So when I was thinking about who we actually target, I was thinking of the types of behaviours and kind of the trends that our audiences display on our social media and also the people who we've met along the way on the path. And these are the kind of traits that really spring to mind. So we have those who are adventurous who already know about the path and they're all very enthusiastic walkers anyway. They tend to want to through hike or walk the path over a long period of time and some do it over five, six, seven years. So there's lots of repeat visits. We have those who are just find out about the path and they are seeking more information, enthusiastic with the information they have to hand and they just want to start walking it. Then we have those new audiences who have yet to discover the Wales Coast Path and recently new audiences for us have been the Welsh Youth Movement. So we've been working with the Earth, which is the National Voluntary Youth Organisation here in Wales, as well as the Brownies and also the National Churches Trust. We also market to coastal accommodation providers such as there's B&Bs, there's campsites and hotels along the path. The travel trade, tour operators and travel agents with, um, with Visit Wales and also coastal businesses which may be cafes, um, shops, kiosks that really make walk in the path and experience. Um, so those are the people who we market to on a B2B basis. So here are some key audience insights into our customers. Our 2015 visitor survey found that there was a nearly equal split between male and female visitors and the average age of 53 years old. Um, this is actually in reverse to what's on our social media following on Facebook in particular, we have more females, but same age range. Um, so that's quite an interesting observation. 59% um, of the Wales Coast Path walkers who were included in the survey actually resided in Wales. But there was also a large proportion of walkers from the northwest England, southwest Wales and the Midlands. The average spend is around £4.63 whilst on the path. So spending money on, say, drinks, a bit of food um, and things like that. And the average distance walked was three miles. Whilst we've been walking on the path, we've seen people from overseas, we've seen families, but we've also seen groups. So there's quite a variety of walkers on the path. So when we were asked how businesses have adapted to the path and its visitors, I did a quick Google search and I found these two hotels, both based um, in the southwest coast in Wales on the Gower Peninsula. Now you will see from the screenshots of their websites is that they know what their visitor wants, what their walker wants. So for example, the hotel on the left hand side they have a dedicated walking page. Um, they offer walking itineraries to take away, but they also offer facilities aimed at walkers specifically. So that's things like offering a packed lunch somewhere dry to, um, to dry their clothes and provision of maps, which is always a really, really good thing and those good things to offer. And the same with the one on the right, they actually link to our website to give their guests more information to help them plan their visit to the Wales Coast Path and to their accommodation. So this particular coastal accommodation we sprang to mind in terms of the way they market themselves on social media. So Aberporth Coastal Holidays, um, they are in West Wales in, um, on the on Ceredigion and this is their, a screenshot of their Instagram account. Now, the first thing that really strikes me is their inspirational content. 
mixed in with details of their offer. So it's mainly about what you would find there in terms of the stunning scenery and the things to do. And when we spoke to them, they said they learned that the coast path is a really big draw for their visitors. So what they do now on their social media posts is that they put some detailed um, walks on their Instagram account. They do plenty of videos and they use our hashtags. And most importantly, they tag us on their posts. Um, and that's really good because it means that we can like, we can reshare, we can comment on all their um, great content. And um, it's good for customers to see what they're expecting. The one thing that I really did like about this particular social media account is that on the left, on the right hand side there, they have easy to access highlights. So there you see guest reviews. They have a bit about coast path, the beaches, the Abba and Abapol from days out. And these are really easy to access information for their visitors. And the one thing that you probably can't see much on the um, on the actual presentation, but they've also put a, a window sticker in their window. Now, on previous business engagement um, events, we gave out window stickers, which said, Wales Coast Path welcoming walkers. And we encouraged the business at the time to put these up in their window for passing trade. And it's really as a way of a ra raising brand awareness physically on the path because it's 870 miles long but you won't see a way marker say every mile every two miles so when you come to places along the path where there's buildings it was important for us that there was a physical awareness of the logo and our ethos and so they've taken on board and put the the sticker in their window, which is really, really good for both of us, really. So thinking about um, the other businesses that we market to um, about the path, we thought of uh, Anglesey Walking Holidays. So they specialise in guided coastal walks and they also do those extra things like accommodation booking, providing maps and working with other local businesses, for example, eateries on suggestions on where to eat. And not only do they do walking holidays, they also offer cycling holidays. So there's an extra bit of activity that their walkers could do as well. The second business that we thought of was the Sheen Coastal Bus Service. Now, this was initially a two year trial using um, grants from public sector. And now it's part of a Welsh government transport initiative to have buses running in certain parts of Wales. Now, the USP for this service is that there is no fixed route or timetable. So walkers can book their space on the bus from wherever they start or finish on the path via phone or online booking. Now this is a really big draw for this particular bus service because there's service in a section of the path that has very little or no public transport on popular walking days. So they're available from Friday, from, some, from Friday to Monday for a small fee. And the bonus about this is that it's also being used by locals along the coast path as well. So when we were asked about best practices in promoting the Wales Coast Path, we immediately thought of the experience of being on the path. So walking the Welsh coastline and soaking up our heritage and our unique language along the way is our USP. And Trade Insights found that when people come to Wales, they want an authentic experience. When they're out in the open, they want something uniquely Welsh. And also research has shown that people like multi-activity holidays. So combining, say, walking with a bit of 
cycling, a bit of shopping and things like that. So with those insights in mind, we um, worked with Snowdonia Active, a not-for-profit organisation, which operates as a consultancy delivering projects linked to outdoor recreation, tourism and conservation in Wales. And as a part of an existing project, they were putting together a collection of memorable experiences. And these encourage the visitor to bond with Wales via distinctive and engaging products. So we thought, oh, this sounds really interesting. See how, let's see how this can work for Wales Coast Path and walking. So we ran a webinar and it was aimed at businesses or individuals to see how they can combine their business or interest with the path. So the experience that is um, exampled here is a wild swim adventure with blue tits. So the blue tits are a group of people who love swimming in the sea, no matter what the weather is. So their experience, their offer is walk the coast path in Pembrokeshire and finish off with an organized swim in the sea, followed by a hot drink and great company. And this is quite a unique experience and it gives our Wales Coast Path visitors a little bit of added extra value to their time in Wales. And we just thought that combining the Wales Coast Path walking with other experiences, it just gives a more rounded holiday experience. So how do we optimise or make the most of the customer journey along the path for customers to be able to experience the coast path at its best? So in terms of the reach part of the diagram here, we make sure that we have good quality visitor information on our website. So um, adhering to search engine optimization principles is really important so that people can find us easily online. We also use social media to deliver good content suited to our customers. So we share our walking itineraries according to what's trending or relevant at the time. So when it comes to summer holidays, we push out our family itineraries. And we also do printed leaflets about the path. And we get those distributed all over Wales as well as inland areas to coastal accommodation, so b and campsites. We also do them where there's high footfall, such as supermarkets and libraries, and also at transport hubs, such as um, service stations and um, key areas where people enter Wales. We try and get people to act upon our our marketing efforts. So, for example, we ask or we encourage people to join our Facebook community group. And this has been extremely popular during the summer where people were doing staycations because of the pandemic. And so we had a lot of people joining the community group asking where's the best place to start and and putting up inspiring pictures of their walks on the path and this is a really good social listening tool for businesses to see what questions are people asking and see whether your business can plug those gaps in information. We also want people to download our Wales Coast Path app. We use um, augmented reality and um, drone footage and games on our app to help people discover the path in a different way, in a more fun way. But we also have a track my walk function, which is really aimed at those people who want to walk the path for a long periods of time and to track their walk. And we also want people to download or share our walking itineraries on their social media. In terms of the convert, we have um, our newsletters which goes out uh, as and when there are really relevant things to talk about. And we have a mixture of, um, of B2B and B2C subscribers. We roughly have about 1,400 subscribers at the moment. 
Um, each newsletter has a bit of stuff about current work and forward look, and it links to our marketing toolkits where appropriate. So these are really good also kind of things to catch up on so that you know where we're going with with our marketing and promotional activity. We want to engage with people um, on the path. So we definitely encourage user generated content by sharing, commenting and, and you know, and liking and with the Aberpoth Coastal Holidays social media account on Instagram, that's a prime example of really using good imagery of where you are on the path to inspire, infuse, and help people discover a different part of the Wales Coast path. We also do live streams on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram where possible. Again, that real life feed is really engaging and it can be easily shared on social media channels. So how do we help businesses optimize the path? Well, we have developed a series of marketing toolkits. So the one on the far left is a marketing toolkit designed at any coastal businesses. And so this is a basically a guide on how to use the pulling power of the Wales Coast Path with top tips and insights in what we promote um, about the path, giving ideas such as pack lunches, providing maps, um, showing their visitors where they can walk. And the more information that people have at accommodation, the better, and they can decide then on where they want to go. We've also put together a travel trade toolkit. We saw that there was a bit of a, mar um, a gap in our information provision um, and we have been targeting businesses but not the travel trade. So we worked with Visit Wales on developing a travel trade toolkit and with this we put together details on where to stay, getting about, cruise port facilities, things to do, where to shop and where to eat and drink and all that essential information for tour operator or travel agent to put together for their customers. We've also put together official professional imagery and video and these are all accessible on our social channels and they're free to download and um, free to use in their promotional marketing as well. So I've come to nearly the end of my presentation. Um, these are, but this is where you can find further information about us. So these, these are the links to our website and our social channels, but also the toolkits. Um, you can find us online uh, using the handle at Wales Coast Path and we're on the main platforms and those are hashtags and if you have any queries you can easily email us on that email there. So without further ado I just want to say thank you very much for listening. Um, we hope that we've given you a little bit of inspiration, a few ideas on how we've engaged with businesses along the Wales Coast Path um, and thank you. Uh, that was a um, really, 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 really informative presentation from Eve Nicholson. Um, I think there, there are streets ahead of us um, and it was really useful to see, you know, not only how the local businesses have engaged with with the route, um, you know, the different hotels and the, and the coastal um, transport bus and um, but it's also it's also really useful to see how they promote the trail, like the the Facebook community group and and the app and the and the toolkits for businesses. So, um, I I can definitely learn um from from that. Um, so what I'm going to do um that's that's the end of the presentations. Um, I'm going to open up um just quickly. Hopefully, it'll not take um too long. Just we're going to 
hopefully that's given you some food for thought. Um, you know, now you know where the route is, what kind of visitor is going to come to the trail, um, what that visitor needs, uh, what, you know, how you can maybe service those visitors. Um, you know, we've listened to a real life case study from, from elsewhere who has a similar type of visitor as well. Um, <clears throat> so if anybody has any questions, um, please feel free. Now there's myself and there's there's Inga here. Um, I, I don't think Eve, Eve Nicholson isn't here tonight, but you know, if there's any questions that you do have for her, like we can certainly forward them on. So if, if anybody has any questions, Come on. I, yeah, sorry, I was just struggling to unmute myself. Um, I, I have a BNB the right at the end of stage one and the beginning of stage two um, of, of the IAT. And uh, so let me just close the door here. Yeah? And uh, one of the problems that people have with the first stage of the route is that there's no markings. Um, the route is not marked coming off sleeve league. Uh, down to Mellonmore and Silver Strand. Inga mentioned something about that. We really need to try and mark it. I don't know what the issue is. I tell you what the issue is, Leon. I, I can I can fill in there. That's that section, Leon, will never be a path. Not not in the foreseeable future, anyway. There's every designation that Europe has to offer is slapped onto it. The terrain is quite dangerous and. Um, that there's too much that can go wrong if you take a hiker, a walker that isn't really self-sufficient, that can't read maps and read the terrain from a map and has a compass and knows how to look after themselves. That's why we're saying, look, at that section is for people who are either two hikers who plan their own routes in other countries and all of that from maps and can read that, or you take a guide. Or as I said, Leon, um, the idea really for, for the occasional walker is that they, they might do the, the pilgrim path at Sleeve Lee yeah. or they just go over to Bunglass and do the cliff top or a little bit of that yeah. and then transfer over to Man and Beg and start the route proper there. It would be too dangerous and really and truly I'm working quite a bit with Mountain Rescue in Donegal and I really don't want to put any more on them than they have on their plate already. So that's that's the main reason for that, Leon. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because I do transport people from Bunglass back here, and then they do stage two, they go down to, to port, and I fetch them from port back here for accommodation because there's nothing there, and then drop them the next day at port again. That's brilliant. Yeah, excellent. Okay, thank you. Now, that was my only question because I have had people say they can't find the path. They don't know. They get lost, uh, which I think <laughs> might be more, more dangerous than them, them not doing it. To, to be honest, Leon, we're, we're after ordering signage and all of that. So there will be signage to tell people exactly what they find. And they will be told that there is no path for that okay, stretch. Yeah. And that it's dangerous to go further if you don't know what you're doing. That would be a good idea. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, um, well, I'll just take a note here as well that, you know, we need to communicate that clearly within any kind of marketing campaigns or social posts or even on the website as well. So um, Inga, if you could maybe provide me with just like actual details on that, like start and end or, or some word in, or, or, or I can phone you at some stage and, and get that. It's just so that we're communicating that really clearly. Either you're experienced or you take a guide for that, for that section. Okay, is anybody any other questions? Yes, yeah. I can ask a question. Hello, Eimear. Hello, um, all the way over here in Belfast. I came oh, to the small one because, um, well, it suited me, but also, um, so my company's away, we walk. I'm dead interested in this. We've come a long way from what I can see, um, but we've a very long way to go in terms of its capacity for long distance walkers who do want full services. Um, and that is on trail accommodation. Um, there's some sections are fine and there's other bits. I don't know it well in the West at all, but what I do know of it, and I'd be very interested, I'll probably need to come to them all. You've done great work in establishing what the needs are 
for the walkers and where and where the accommodation is missing. Um, but to what degree is there any development plan, initiative plan for, I know certainly the Moilway part in, on the East Coast would be too long a day. Um, I would imagine most of the Sparrows, most of um, Tyrone, lot, and you've highlighted the bits in Donegal. So it is terrific. It's definitely moving along. I see it as a career long project. You know, if this is what it can be by the time I retire, I'm calling that a win. So I do have a very long term goal for it, but that's its biggest gap. Um, and the other bit, um, Inge, you might know to what degree is it surface and on surface? How much road walking is there? Because um, to me, they're the two. I'm delighted to hear it's 70, 80 percent who are, you know, that's where the volume of people, you know, there will be opportunities for businesses the whole way along the route. I'm interested in being, it becoming a long distance route uh, for people who like a hot shower and a hot meal and a warm bed and all those lovely basic things. Anyway, that's my question. I don't know if anyone can answer it, but um, I'm putting it out there. Thanks, Eimear. Um, Inga, do you want to... Now, I, I have looked at the gaps um, in Donegal and, and Derry City for my two webinars, and I, I, I will um, I just make a note that I, I haven't looked in detail at all the other areas, but I do think, you know, there's definitely, there's definitely gaps there. It's, you know, you can see from the Wales coast path, we've got, all, as you, even you said yourself, we've got a long way to go. And, you know, that hopefully after this, you know, this marketing project, this will just, you know, this is a brand awareness. It'll plant the seed, um, but hopefully continued marketing will take place to promote the trail because, it, you know, it, it needs it. Um, and until until the trail is well established and attracting that visitor, you know, it's like whenever I said the, the chicken and egg scenario, you know, these these services will be will establish um whenever there's visitors, but there needs to be visitors, you know, to, to actually get the, the, you know, the, the services there and the, the, then you need to have visitors so that the services are in place. Um, so, I mean, I can't really comment on the accommodation and not other, other areas, but we will take note of that. You know, I don't know, Inga, if you want to jump in about the surface in Donegal, maybe area? Well, yeah, I think, oh, sorry, sorry, Leon. No, no, I just wanted to say the problem is that port, there's never going to be services because of the nature of the place. Um, so that's always going to be a gap in, in, in this. And it is unfortunately at the end of quite a long stage from Glencolum Hill to port is a tough walk. So people do then need to stop. They can't carry on to Ardo. It's impossible. But there's always going to be a gap there. But, but even, you know, as you were saying, like um, transfer shuttle services to and from there, you know, that's that's kind of the next the next step. Um, and that's that's still services and service the visitor, even if they have to get a shuttle, sh shuttle service at the start and the end of the day, that's completely fine. As long as we can clearly communicate that and tell them that that service exists. It's the only solution for that particular. And I think for a very long time, if not forever, that will be the only solution. It's probably the same. So. In way as well you know there's nothing up there there's nobody up there you wouldn't build a bnb at, th at that section you know so uh, i'd be very interested to know a bit more about the welsh game that was interesting to see that you know and i think you know there's more more and more informal kind of accommodation being set up through like airbnb but i suppose the, the problem with with those is that you know typically the the walker has to rent the whole house which, which, which the, the, the point is that at, at port there's nothing there is nothing there isn't there's one um, uh, eco cottage there but that's only rental rentable for a week at a time and the whole cottage but uh, there, there are simply no dwellings there that's as simple as that so it will never change there that's the problem well, I think then, as, as Beverly's pointed out, I suppose if, if that's not going to change and there's not going to be any buildings there, then it's the promotion of um, access and in and out of there. So the utilisation, like that you're doing already, Leon, of, of shuttle services, and that that, that becomes a, a feature, I suppose, of the trail in that section. Yes. Okay, you do your nice trail, and then Leon's going to nip over and pick us up and take us back for the night. Can I jump in there? Uh, yes. Just... I, 
I, I actually am based near Donegal Town and uh, I actually provide this the shuttle service as well. I don't want to provide accommodation, but I, I'm, if you go to my Facebook, you'll get Donegal walking packages, which I've already done the transfers along the IAT from Kelly's Bridge. I, it's funny, the package I offer at the moment is kind of doing it backwards <laughs> because it's just how it works. Uh, but I would work with the B&Bs, provide it and pick you up, transfer you, transfer your luggage, etc. So that service is already available in Donegal. I know there's, uh, it's, it's limited maybe, and there's just the one or two of us had it, but uh, it, it, the service is there. So to go to Port or to end up in Malenbeg or to get transferred down to Sleeve League and walk over to Malenbeg, that's already there, that service. Brilliant. Yeah. I'm looking forward to your marketing campaign because I want to get in there. <laughs> yes. no, and I mean, this is this is why we're here to engage with the businesses, get to know who you are, what you offer, so that we can tell people about it. Yeah, um, and, and I, I suppose one of the things that's that, from my perspective, what I'd like to see available soon is the sort of the detailed maps or if whatever you. I don't know what you're doing in relation to maps or what yeah. maps we can use. Yeah, um, so the new website will have interactive mapping on it, so, yeah. so it'll be it'll be very detailed. I suppose um, I should mention that the website will have I suppose like two kind of avenues. One avenue for the short distance walker, so a short distance walker will be able to see a map just of maybe like loop walks off the IAT um, because they, they don't want to walk long, long distances and um, they just want to experience you know maybe three or five miles on the IAT and that's it but then we on the other hand we will have like a long distance map which will have accommodation food and drink and there'll be walking services as well so the long distance walker can use that and plan plan their trip so that's why we need, that's why we want to, you know, get, get all the information from you and what experiences you want to put up onto the website. Now, we, we have um, liaised with, um, you know, like the, the visitor information centres to gather all the data on like the accommodation and food and drink. And that's how we put together those maps. So what I would say is once, once that goes live and all that's plotted on, it would be worth us getting in touch with you guys just to make sure like, you're definitely there and if you're not let us know you know yeah. so we we will do that, that that's... yeah so, um you don't envisage doing actual physical maps uh for for the user to use on the ground um we'll, we'll be doing it a, a trail guide but that you know that'll be an overview map it's certainly not right. something that you would ever navigate from right. um, so uh, you know because uh we, we we haven't we'll not be doing like an actual detailed you know, right, yeah, that's great. That's just you know, curious, they'll, yeah. they'll be able to use the interactive mapping on the website and download that as a GPX file to their mobile. So you can actually go in. I don't know if you've used it yourself, but you can go into Google Maps and it uploads onto your phone. Right. You can navigate from, from your phone. And then essentially they can use OS maps, you know, alongside those as well. Yeah. And in fairness, John, locally we will do maps as well. There is, yeah. the, there is a, a more and more of a cohort of people who want to go walking to not use their phone. And in fairness, in, in Donegal, we have a lot of places out there where there is no mobile phone reception. So it's not really that reliable to be out. So I think the paper map is still the one to go for. But I think that is more a local issue rather than right, an yeah. overall issue. I think the trail is too long. If you yeah. publish something on paper, it will be out of date as soon as you publish it. Ah, yeah. You know, yeah. So yeah, well, what I'd be doing for the moment is I break down the, the OS map the, and uh, break it down into day sections and and give them that on day sections and point out the various different things on, and also use View Ranger then if somebody's using View Ranger or something like that, you can upload it to there. Yeah, no, I also regularly print maps for them from from the existing website. So when people come here, they want to walk the next session. I print for them the the instructions and the map for what it's worth. You know, it's not the most detailed map, but it helps. And seriously, uh, Leon, as soon as we have that website up, whatever businesses will be on that, whatever we'll be doing, definitely here in Donegal, whatever we're doing, we'll be going out to all those businesses who are registered with it. Yeah. Like this, this is a two-way thing. Yes, we're, we're trying to promote it uh, to the businesses and also promote it to the walkers, which then helps the businesses and helps the path to grow. So that's that's the idea. And, and this path is amazing. I sent somebody up the path the other day. They said as they cross over 
and they could see the Glen Valley. They got stuck there for an hour and a half. They couldn't leave. <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> That's not a good news story. Well, well, just because of it's so, so beautiful, you know. Like oh, the, I thought I thought you meant they they got lost. No, no, no. They, they they just got to the point where they could see the whole of Glen below them, and they said it was so stunning they couldn't move. <laughs> Well, that's, that's it's a beautiful path. Great. Um, well, what what um, this this has been recorded, so I don't. You might want to watch it over again or not, but we will circulate it. And what we'll also do then is we will be in touch to gather your details of just what you've what you provide, maybe experiences that you want to submit onto the website and into the marketing campaigns, and just to make sure that you are listed on our website. So we will be in touch with you. So you, you, you don't really have to do anything until, until we get in touch with you. But I just want to make sure that we've captured everyone. Um, and then once we, there'll be a series of, of launches probably in around next month. And that's whenever we can kickstart the actual marketing. Once we launch, you know, the new website and the capital works that Inga was talking about. Um, and we can also then send you, you know, we've we've taken um, quite a few uh, videos of the area, and and um, we've we've been out in six days um, photography. So we've got, you know, quite a lot of um, content there that we can also share with you. So you can promote that your on your channels as well. Um, so if if anybody doesn't have any further questions, um, I'm happy to to let you all go. And, and sorry, just I, I, sorry, Kevin here. I'm sorry, I'm working here at the minute, so um, it might be a bit of an echo in the background. Um, yeah. No, I just uh, I noticed um, just when you're sorry, I'm going to try to get rid of this echo. Um, I noticed when you listed walking providers that uh, my name wasn't up there, even though I thought I registered with Inga last year, who was walking Wildside. And I actually do the walks the whole way from Sleeve League, which I've done the Appalachian Trail walk uh, maybe two, three years ago. And I've been doing that walk for the last maybe up to 20 years from Sleeve League to Ardla and into Gladys. Okay, well, here... Um, I just noticed I just noticed that the name wasn't up there when... Uh, what did you think about that? So it's Kevin Maguire from... Where was... I'm sure we have met probably... Um, Ardla, yeah. Inga, you'd, uh, I met you a good few times. No, just we were chatting before. Sorry, I'm in the gym thing. Echoes. No, you're okay. Good. Um, on. Uh, what's, what's... I know, it's just what, uh, because I, I registered uh, Walking the Wild Side was the name of the company. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks. That should be on your. That should be on the list, Beverly. He's okay. definitely on the list. Oh, that's okay. But then it, it, you'll definitely be on the website if you're on the list. So, um, apologies. Okay, I just perfect. That's okay. That's hundred percent. Uh, hello, how are you, how are you doing? Um, it's uh, Michael Yar here. Like, um, I uh, set up a business this year, um, uh, Surf Sup, Surf School. So um, I'm just after, like, uh, I'm just on the very uh, start of it, like, you know, so um, uh, so it's around the Atlantis, our dry port new area. So um that's uh, uh, that's where I'm at. Look, like, so uh, uh, thanks for uh, the the meeting. Anyway, it's good, good to see you all. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Michael. Um, and it's something maybe you know. I know we were listening there in the wheels from from Eve that she was saying that um, some walkers are keen to do multi activities. So. You know, if, yeah. if, you know, have you ever thought about maybe partnering up with some of the walk guides so that whenever they finish their their walk on the IAT that they maybe go for for um, a surfing session? Oh, yeah, yeah, de definitely. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm planning on doing. Or, yeah, so. Great. Yeah. Well, well, that's something that we could certainly promote um, on, on the website and through the marketing campaigns. Um, oh, that, yeah. that would be... Um, you know, really welcomed and, and and unique and different. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's no, the, no yeah. better no better way to ease off those walked off legs by just getting them relaxing and some. You know, I mean, people put sea salt in their bath. Why not just get into the sea? Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah, you yeah. Know, so <laughs> there's certainly uh, there's linkages within all not only walking but all all forms of tourism and having that offering around that area. It certainly would be helpful to develop that um, further as well. So yeah, good to see you here. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah.
Yeah. All right. Anybody has any any further questions or are you happy happy just to wait then until until we get in touch um just to get get more information from you and get get your experiences up onto the website and everything. So just so you know that it'll be my colleague Ethan at Outdoor Recreation and I. So if you see an email from him coming into your inbox, you'll know you'll know what it's about. So just just keep an eye out for that. Talks. Okay. Thanks for thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Yes, okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. We we'll circulate this. this up. Thank you. Anyway, after great. Thank thanks everybody for their time. Lovely. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers.